everybody todd metalhead weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well got a quick update here in regards to what's now tropical depression four it was originally potential tropical cyclone four but we have now gone fully tropical with this system it's actually developing pretty nicely as it's just now passing over cuba at this point we're now over the open waters of the gulf here which is very concerning we talked about this the uh yesterday actually where when we get over towards this region here we'll see how strong this storm ends up getting uh there's still questions in regards to where this is going to end up going uh right now this has been on quite a westward trend here if you look at the latest update here even and if you even look at satellite you can actually see that it's still kind of making a little bit of a jog off to the west here and if you compare yesterday's spaghetti models, if you watch the video to today, you can see that it's a little bit further out into the Gulf than it was before. So with that, the forecasted intensity has now changed. Whereas before it was a 65 mile per hour storm. Now we're expecting this to be at the cutting edge of becoming a hurricane here. This is only four miles per hour under what it would take to become a hurricane here. This is pretty much guaranteed to become a tropical storm at this point. It will take the name Debbie. And then we'll have to see what happens next here. And while I've been saying in the last couple of videos that I'm expecting an impact more so towards the Big Ben, I'm going to go on a limb here and say I wouldn't go as far as to rule out places like maybe Mobile and Biloxi even. However, I do think by the time this thing really starts to strengthen, it's going to start to take that northward turn. That's pretty uh, common, common place for these uh, systems here. The reason why that ends up often being is often due to the storm tops growing taller and more being uh, more apt to being affected by steering currents from areas of high pressure, like the one that I'm anticipating to be just off to the east here over towards Bermuda. This is the Bermuda High, so to speak. So with that being said, I'm mainly still thinking Big Ben, but a little further to the west of the panhandle is not out of the question yet and even then another thing to remember is whenever we look at these uh, cones of uncertainty like what you're seeing here for example the impacts span much further than what you're seeing on this so that being said if you're anywhere along the gulf coast you will feel some kind of impacts be it something more along the lines of surf and rip currents up to severe storms with tornado potential heavy rainfall increased humidity a lot of us along the eastern parts of the gulf coast even all the way out towards new orleans even you're going to feel some kind of impact albeit some more major than others but taking a closer look at this storm here and i wanted to kind i'm not necessarily trying to brag by saying this either i want to make it very clear but like I said, I was anticipating not only the westward track here, but also if we look at spaghetti models, we're continuing to see that little trend and then also the intensity here. Whereas yesterday we were seeing only a couple models pushing this towards hurricane, we're starting to see a few more putting it right on, right at 75 miles an hour here. So I am thinking at some point this does become a hurricane pretty close to landfall here within the next 36 hours here. And the other thing to make note of if we go further along here, I'm going to zoom in, is notice this little, um, this little curb that this does after it gets over towards Savannah, Georgia here. South Carolina, you're going to have to pay extra close attention to this because this might be heading your way as well, especially over towards areas like Charleston. Now, the question for me will be, will this end up, will this end up back at sea? And if it does, just what happens with that? What will that mean? Will it end up being kicked out to sea or will the Carolinas get increased impacts as a result of it? It's kind of hard to say at this point, but in either case, though, if you look at this cone of uncertainty right towards the edge of it, we have a pretty wide area as to where the center of this storm may end up going but for the main area here where the majority of spaghetti models are going to end up pointing towards is this area right here it sneaks back out into the atlantic briefly right before eventually heading back into south carolina here so could be 
dealing with some impacts over here towards the South Carolina coast. It could take an elongated bend here, maybe hit North Carolina as well. So even as far north as maybe Cape Hatteras, you still need to be paying attention to this as well. You're not in the cone as of right now, but that can easily change. Also, with this storm being close to landfall, we're starting to get the hurricane watches, tropical storm warnings already. In fact, we can start to expect those tropical storm force winds to be felt in some areas. Well, right now, this, of course, isn't a tropical storm. We're gonna, we can anticipate it probably within the next advisory, which will be at 5 p.m. Eastern, to get the name Debbie. We could see those tropical storm force winds come in around maybe even as early as, I would say, even 5, 6 o'clock Eastern. This will mainly be over towards the Keys and western parts of Florida here towards the peninsula. Eventually, by the time we get towards Sunday morning, we're going to see a much wider scope of those hurricane force winds. Then eventually we'll see the panhandle and pretty much the rest of the peninsula un dealing with those hurricane force, the tropical storm force winds, excuse me. This still isn't forecast to become a hurricane yet, so I'm not trying to scare anyone. Then as we go further along, it's still questionable as to what we could be dealing with in regards to tropical storm force winds for the Carolinas. Georgia, it looks like you're going to end up seeing tropical storm force winds, I would say more so towards Sunday night, overnight, and into Monday morning than the Carolinas. It's still questionable at this time as to what happens there. But I think anywhere that's below this 8 p.m. line here is pretty much a shoe in to experience at the very least tropical storm force winds, maybe more. We'll go further into the impacts tomorrow as we get closer and closer towards landfall. We will be covering this when it does make landfall, regardless of what day it is. But in any case, the big reason why I'm concerned, we talked about this yesterday, I just want to make sure that you see it properly, is right over towards this area in the Gulf of Mexico where the storm is going to be going, is just how look at how warm the waters are. I mean, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit more so you can get a really good view of it. So look over towards this region here. And while, yes, I know it's in Celsius here, good trick would be to multiply this by two and add 30. And that's usually your Fahrenheit temperature, give or take maybe one or two degrees. That's just a quick way of going about calculating or converting Celsius into Fahrenheit here. I think I'm probably a couple degrees off to be exact, but I would say that we're getting close to, if not reaching 90 degrees towards these areas here. And some of these areas may also be marginally warmer here. So concern continues across this region here as to just what this storm may do. I do expect it to strengthen into a hurricane personally speaking, but I have, I can't verify that for sure, of course, until it happens. It's just not something I'm in control of. And then also another thing to make note of here is even towards the Atlantic, to put in respect for you, 80 degrees is what you would need to get a, a tropical system going here and to maintain it over towards this region. If it does get back out into the water, we're still within that 80 degree threshold. So that being said, I would anticipate that we could even see some strengthening it before a potential second landfall if that does end up being the case. Right now, it's just kind of hard to say at this point, though. But with that all being said, stay tuned on the channel where we'll be posting further updates beyond that point. We'll have the shorts up even, and of course, we'll be going live either Sunday or Monday at this point to make, to, uh, make our coverage here. So that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I'll see you soon on the next update. Till then, take care and have a good rest of your day. It's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman here.